What's going on YouTube? Jeannie AJ here. So today I'm going to share with you how I'm using CrowdSet in my Caddy setup um, for better security. So uh, some prerequisites before I begin. I'm running Caddy via Docker Compose and I have the Caddy image set up using the following plugins uh, and modules. You can watch my previous video if you need guidance on how I have that set up. So what is CrowdSec? CrowdSec is an open source community driven solution uh, designed to detect and block malicious activities. So I haven't looked too much into the community side of CrowdSec, but I know that users of CrowdSec can share information about detected threats uh, co contributing to a global database um, of malicious IPs, right? So for this setup, I'll be using CrowdSec to monitor my caddy access logs and blocking any malicious activities detected. All right, so first we're going to go over the Docker Compose file for CrowdSec. I'm gonna run the command code, compose.yaml. All right, so under services, uh, this is where we'll be configuring um, a service named CrowdSec. Uh, so the image that we are going to be using will be the latest version of CrowdSet from uh, Crowd Security. The image, or excuse me, the container name will be CrowdSec. Under environment, uh, we're going to specify what collections we want CrowdSec to download. So collections are curated bundles of parsers, scenarios that work together to form a coherent security package. These collections simplify the development, or excuse me, simplify the deployment of CrowdSec by providing pre-built configurations tailored to specific use cases, such as protecting web servers or detecting brute force attacks. So there's many different collections to choose from depending on your use case, but for my setup, you only need the following collections. I have the Linux Cloud Security Collection. I have the Caddy, as well as AppSec generic rules. Going under volumes, you need to ensure that you have included, included access to the Caddy logs. As you can see here, this is where my Caddy access logs are within my server. And we're just mapping back to the var log caddy with inside the CrowdSec container with read only privileges. So we also need to create a config directory and add the akis.yaml. Uh, so we can do that now, or I'll just show you. I already have it created in the config. As you can see, I already have the akis.yaml file created. So looking at the keys. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but the keys.yaml file, if we look at it, this is the only thing that you need within this file. That is the file name to your caddy logs. And then you can add a label for caddy. Moving on to networks. So you want to place the CrowdSec a container within the same network as Caddy. And then for the restart policy, you can set it to uh, do not uh, restart unless stopped or restart unless stopped. And then here we define that our Caddy network is externally created. Now we can go ahead and start the container, making sure that you're in the right directory as the compose.yaml file from CrowdSec, you're going to run a sudo docker compose up dash d. All right, so the next step in this setup is getting the bouncer caddy key. So for this, uh, you need to run exec within, or you need to exec within the docker container for CrowdSec. Uh, which just means you need to you need to create a shell for within the Docker container container and run the the command will be CSCLI, which is 
basically CROW6 CLI. So for convenience, all I did was edit my bash.rc file. Um, that's your file that you can use to create custom aliases to run specific commands within your shell environment. Um, so what I did was I created an alias to run Docker exec CSCLI uh, as if it was a normal binary. Um, so I can show you that real quick. So if you go to, I'm going to run code, home directory, the little tilde, uh, tilde sign is your home directory, um, dot bash rc. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, right here, you can see is where I added the alias. And you can do this the same on your system as well. Um, once you enter in this line of code within your bash rc file, you want to make sure that you either uh, restart your terminal or run a source uh, dot bash rc to um, load the alias into your current shell. So as you can see, I can run CSCLI and it, it works. So the command that you want to run will be a CSCLI bouncers add, and then you want to name it caddy. So for my setup, I already uh, ran this command. So if I run it again, it's going to um, error out bouncer already exists. So I can just do caddy2 just to show you what it'll look like. And it's going to print out an API key. This is exactly what it's going to look like when you run caddy. Uh, you want to make sure that you copy and save this API key. And I'll show you where to place that next. So within your caddy file, you need to add the following configurations under global configurations. That'll be at the top of your caddy file. The first thing you want to add is order crowdsec before respond. So this directive ensures that the crowdsec module processes requests and can evaluate and potentially block malicious requests before any responses are sent. And then you also want to add this crowdsec block, which configures the crowdsec middleware. Here you have the URL of where that CrowdSec API is accessible. Here you have the API key, which is used to authenticate within the CrowdSec API. The ticket interval is set, um, the interval at which CrowdSec middleware checks for updates, as in new, uh, such as new decisions or alerts from the CrowdSec container. And I have mine configured configured to poll every three seconds. So the next URL handles the application security AppSec uh, module, which handles the advanced security and application level protections. Once this is configured, you can add CrowdSec at the bottom of the app. Uh, for this demonstration, we'll be testing this on Photo Prism. So if you go down to my caddy file, where I have photo prism configured for photo.test.juniorhome.net. I'm just going to add the middleware crowdsec at the bottom of the reverse proxy right here. Uh, once you're done with that, you can save it. Um, and then you want to restart your caddy container by running sudo docker compose up dash d and you want to force recreate this container. All right, so now time for the fun part, time for testing. So the first thing I want to do is just verify my IP address to my desktop, um, and I'm going to run the following command uh, within a PowerShell terminal uh, to get an IP address um, interface tail scale. So I am using tail scale right now to connect back to my server. Um, I plan on making a video on how I'm using tail scale in my remote setup. Uh, at a later date, but as you can see, I'm um, using 100.154.99. Uh, All right, next, what I want to do is I'm just going to load up 
photo prism in my browser real quick just to show you that it is up and running. All right. And I'm also going to show you my access logs on my caddy just so you can see that what the IP address is. So I'll run the command sudo. I'm going to tell log slash caddy slash access dot log and I'm going to pipe that over to JQ just to make it easier to read. And as you can see, if we scroll up to the last request made from test photo photo dot test dot genie home dot net, scrolling up to my remote and client IP, you see the 54.99. And that is my desktop IP address. All right, you see that. So now I'm going to head over to a Kali VM that I have stood up. And I'm going to run a tool called GoBuster, which is a tool used in pen testing and you know, ethical hack hacking uh, to brute force various elements of a web application or network. So if all goes well, we have crowd set up, up and running. My IP address will be blocked as soon as I begin the directory scan of Photo Prism. Uh, and you should receive a 4.3, you should see a 4.3 status code. Uh, which means my my desktop has been blocked. So the command right here, go buster directory, brute force, website, photo, dot test, should be test, dot geniehome.net, and it's just the word list that I'm using. And we'll run that. As you can see, immediately I start to receive the 403 code. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Now I'm going to pivot back over to my server terminal and clear the screen. And now I can run the, co the command CSCLI decisions list and that will show the current ips that are being uh, blocked so when i run that i can see let me close this right here make it a little bit bigger that my ip address 100.100.59.99 is currently being uh, blocked reason being interface probing so now if I go back to the web page and I try to refresh, it immediately blocks I was denied. I don't have access to this page, code 403. So how I remove myself from this block list, I will need to run the CSCLI decisions delete IP, and then I'll type in my IP. It removes that block. So if I go back to my website, now I'm able to access it again. So there you have it. This is how I integrated CrowdSec into my Caddy setup. So I'm also using uh, Notify, an open source HTTPS, uh, HTTP based notification service to send, to not push notifications to my phone uh, whenever there's an IP decision made. So I'm going to also, um, in the future, make a video on how I have that implemented within my setup. So this, this video took longer than expected. Um, so in my follow-up video, this is where I'm going to actually go over um, Cloudflare tunnels um, and how I'm using, or how it can be set up um, to use that with CrowdSec and Caddy within, within a setup. Um, and that's a little bit, little bit more difficult because you have to deal with the Cloudflare connecting IP and there's a few different configurations, but um, I have it all figured out. And I'll be able to share that with you in my next video. If you found this helpful, please like, please like and subscribe. Um, thank you for watching. Until next time.